Hello everyone, my name is Christian. Welcome back to Tech Point. Today our guest is Michael, the founder and CEO at Braidit. Hello. Hey, nice. Thanks for having me, Christian. Thank you for joining. At first, tell us, what is Braidit? So Braidit, we say, is the allows you to create shareworthy clips in minutes. We make it easy to source, record, edit, and publish video content. And what we've noticed with organizations is they're really looking to make video an anchor of their content strategy. And part of the difficulty of it is just collecting quality content, whether it's from your organization, your team, your customers. And what our product allows you to do is quickly collect video responses using simply a prompt and a link. And then whomever you share that link with, whether it's your executive team, uh, customers for testimonials, they can click through to that link, they see the prompt, they record their response, and from there you develop a catalog of content you can pull together and combine and create uh, cool experiences with, whether it's short clips and um, to use in your social media marketing or to use in your website as a uh, testimony, excuse me, testimonial or thought leadership type piece. That's great. And what do you see is the biggest problem that you see in this uh, space? The biggest problem? Yeah. I think the biggest challenge a lot of organizations face is that it's actually very costly and difficult to create great video content. And part of it is just in a remote work type culture. You don't have everyone sitting in the same room, so it doesn't even make sense to wheel in a video camera. So how do you actually (laughs) get, especially for professional services organizations where people are the product, how do you get those people on camera, putting their story out there, showing who they are, demonstrating their expertise easily? And that's where our product comes in. We make it really easy for them to record a response, to demonstrate their expertise, do it in their own time, do as many takes as they like so they feel comfortable putting themselves on video, and then give you a great video editor that combines it and allows you to style it, brand it, make it yes. suit your needs and whatever you need that content for. So it's a, it saves a lot of time, energy, money, and it allows you to actually create the content you need at the scale you need it to round out your content calendar. That's great. And uh, what are the use cases of Reddit? Who can use it and for what reasons? Yeah, we see a lot. there's part of the issue with our product is just almost an overwhelming amount of use cases okay. because of the amount of different organizations that need video content. Um, when we started, we worked really closely with podcasters and podcast networks, actually, because we found it to be a great tool for audience engagement and for hosts across a network to collaborate and create short video content together. And then since we've been live, we've seen that actually professional services organizations like law firms, management consultancies, and healthcare benefit greatly from the product as well. Because like I mentioned before, these are organizations where people are the product and you want to give them an opportunity to demonstrate their expertise and let their let their opinion show, show who they are and tell their story. And doing so on video is costly because you have to not only pay for the video production and the recording, but also for the person's time. Usually these people are charging a billable rate or they have a huge opportunity cost for their time. So to take up an afternoon in a recording session actually means real lost money when all you really need is a 30 second sound bite where they can actually put their best foot forward and get the message out there. And that's what our product is great at. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, I love the problem that you're solving. I'd love to know the top features of uh, of Braidit. Yeah, the top features is really streamlining this entire experience. So making it easy to source, record, edit, publish. So creating the it's prompt is as simple as entering a question or entering a prompt. And then you set a recording length. So up to two minutes now, and we're working our way up to five. And then you push that link out. We make it really, really easy for people to record either from their phone or from their laptop and uh, record their response. And then you have this container of content you can pull from combined in different ways. We have a baked in video editor where if you want to add some additional brand identity to it, you can. We have AI integrations for captioning. Um, Good. Well, really makes it easy to just create the type of content that organ- that resonates with your audience that people are looking for that has inherent virality, but is really, really actually difficult and costly to create. I understand. I understand. Well, a product like yours is needed. I see that. Uh, I'm curious about the pricing. What is, uh, what is the pricing? 
Yeah, so we have different tiers. We have a freelance tier currently. We have a professional tier, which is more for organizations. And then we have an enterprise tier for large, larger organizations that want to roll this across a different couple of different departments or a podcast network that wants to apply it across the entire network. We generally charge in it's per user and user is not the person that is uh, responding. It's the person who's creating these prompts and yes. has access to the video editing capabilities. Our current pricing is around $49 per user per month or 39 if they pay annually in the professional tier and an organization a medium sized organization could typically expect maybe two or three users and enterprise maybe it kind of depends on how they're planning to utilize it yeah i understand can you share with us a customer success story some favorite uh, <laughs> uh yes yeah, some of my favorites i mean we've worked with uh I mean, some of my favorites are actually from the podcasting space. We've seen some really cool fan experiences. We have um, like a New York Giants podcast that every kind of Sunday sends a prompt out. And I don't know if you know too much about American football or the New York Giants, but their fans are kind of crazy. So uh, yeah. <laughs> since this prompt out, they're all recording. And then we're, we help them create some cool clips with it. So you've got everything from like families getting around screaming about the Giants to like a Whoa. pizzeria owner <laughs> giving his take. It's the most like New York, New Jersey thing you've ever seen in your life, which is it's a lot of fun. And it's a lot of fun knowing our product helped create that type of content. <laughs> well, and uh, in terms of uh, the market, how competitive is your space? See, it's uh it's an interesting market. I think we have a unique value proposition in the space. We're combining a lot of different features that kind of exist in isolation and you could reconstruct like the workflow by putting together a lot of different tools. What we're doing is actually making it streamlined to actually do it in one unified experience and in doing so you could eliminate other tools but also just save yourself a ton of time and hassle. Uh there's Where we actually see the biggest opportunity for ourselves to create value is, like I mentioned before, in that professional services sector. And there's not a lot of people providing content creation tools for that sector specifically. I think like some of the very forward thinking ones have embraced tools that exist on other sides, but nobody's really talking to them saying, hey, what exactly is going to help you create great content? What is what is going to help you create the content that resonates? What does it look and feel like to have a branded video experience? And that's where we can really, really shine. When did you start the company? We've been around for two years. We've been working on the technology and um, from we actually started as a social media product, which is an interesting path to have taken. But once we were live as a yep. social media product, we had uh several businesses reach out to us and they said like, Hey, I really love this product. I, can I use this for X? Can I use it to have it a branded kind of content creation experience for both my marketing, my internal communications. And like, as we kept going, that's where we, we kept receiving that feedback. And eventually we sat in a room and we're like, guys, what are we doing? Let's just build this. Let's, <laughs> it's a couple of changes <laughs> and uh, we, people are well, begging us for this. So let's just go for it. And, um, So we've been live with this new product for about two months now. And a lot of those early people that had asked for it converted to customers and we're, we're growing as we go. That's great. Have you raised any funding? We did some friends and family were largely bootstrapped and uh, that's kind of a testament to me and my co-founder being engineers. So like we're able to just build this ourselves. So that's the beauty of software. Like it's your time as long as you can actually create software for yourself. And uh, so we've spent, you know, he and I have like a decade of experience working together on different startups, et cetera. And wow. um, so, yeah, it, it for us, it's it's fun to work together. It's fun to build software together. The cost, like, you know, it's just opportunity cost of our salary and earning potential, really. But it, like as long as we're both kind of seeing the opportunity and seeing that we're creating value for people, we see a path and uh, continue to invest our time into creating the product. So you're not plan planning to raise anywhere in the future? We'll see what, like for us, we look at that type of capital as, is it going to be accelerating in our ability to create value for people? Is there like actually a path that if we bring in this type of money, it's going to translate into us either being able to reach more people to create more value for them, or is there some sort of 
I mean, we don't have this right now, but some sort of technical hurdle that we can't reach with it. So right now we're seeing like market acceptance for what we've done. We're seeing that, you know, it's not a very complicated sale. People see the value kind of right away when they see, when they get into a demo, especially people who are struggling to create this type of content, who have that real opportunity cost with their time that I mentioned. So um, if we bring on the capital, it would, wouldn't be till next year. And it would just be to say, hey, look, I think we can get this into more people's hands quicker. So let's get uh, a sales yes. and marketing thing moving much more. I understand. Yeah, makes total sense. And uh, how did you get your first customers? That's an interesting question. I mean, we actually... And I don't know any other way to do it, but we went, unless you're coming out of a sector, but we just had a very kind of narrow definition of who we wanted to look for locally. And then we approached them through direct message and direct email and the people that responded, we were willing to go meet with in person. And this is going back to the ideas of like when we were just wireframes and just talking about the idea of a product and we would just yeah. go meet people for coffee. These people like, a lot of local podcasters, actually, a lot of local content creators that were willing to give us their time and show them the ideas. And they were excited about what we were working on and willing to continue to give us our ideas. And even as we've pivoted and made changes along the way, like stay with us and, and continue to support. So, yeah. And today, what is your most successful strategy for getting new customers? Uh, it's, you know, we view it as a combination of outbound and inbound. So we, know who we create the most value for, right? And we genuinely believe that we are creating value for them. So we're not afraid to reach out cold because we genuinely believe that if they use our product, we're going to make yes. their lives better. So and when you actually have that belief, it's not, you know, <laughs> you don't feel like you're bothering people by sending them yes. an email or sending them a message. It's like, hey man, look, I can actually make your life better. I can get you content that's going to make you look good for your boss. I can help improve. You, these workflows that are probably you're probably doing this right now and it's a huge pain and you're paying a lot of different people along the way and um, so a lot of what we do is just really kind of knowing who we create the value for and being targeted in our outreach and then making sure we have the like content and social proof on our websites and our social media so that when people receive this cold email or cold response they go check us out and they can actually say like, oh, actually, this is kind of a cool idea. I'm interested. Let's, let's take this to the next step. And that's, that's how we, we've been successful. And uh, what was your biggest challenge since uh, starting the company? My biggest what? My biggest challenge. Your biggest challenge. Oh, biggest challenge? Yes. I think actually this past, the environment for technology has changed quite a bit since we started it. And when we started it, it was kind of a go-go era for software and technology companies. And um, like during that period, we were a social media product. We hadn't taken any venture capital and we were trying at the exact moment we had some traction with the social media product is when kind of the rug got pulled on, on venture capital in the US. And we just kind of took a look at a path that was this way and then a path that was embracing this as a B2B SaaS product. And having and making that decision to make that change, commit fully to it, we spent like, you know, the past summer, like it was a small team. So it, and just building software in your summer is not the fun way. <laughs> software is best built in the winter time. <laughs> but we did we spent most of the summer building this product together and making the changes necessary to get it live. So it was it was a tough summer, but now we're, we're um we feel much better about everything. Yeah. Totally worth it. Uh, what is the vision for the future of the company? Yeah, what our vision is to, to continue to create value for people to be, and understanding that who that demographic is that actually we create the most value for. Like, like I mentioned, professional services organizations, people who want this content where it's more expensive because of the opportunity costs of the time to create it. We have real ROI. We can just show them. We can say, hey, you don't just have to pay for the video production. Yes. Those two, three hours of your partner's time is costing you $7,000 and you're getting a 30 second video clip. Tell me that adds up. We can actually uh, create a lot of value for them. So our for the near term, it's to make sure we're focused on delivering value for that segment and not just like with the make sure the product actually meets their needs, get the feedback from them that 
rounds out the features that are, like I said, nobody's really 100% focused on that segment saying, what exactly do you need? And we want to be that company and actually deliver the most value for them, for their content creation and content creation experiences. Now, more on the personal side, what is your story? How did you start your career? Uh, I have been like done an entrepreneurial past, done a lot of different companies. I've had some success, so I've had a lot of failures and I think each of them has kind of taught me a lot and, um, you know, out of col in college, I did a lot of business plan competitions out of college. I did a startup that was like a business continuity and disaster recovery center that raised a lot of money, but then the financial crisis happened in the U S and we had broke ground on it. So we were stuck with this million dollar hole in the ground that we couldn't get the financing of. And like, these are the things, you know, you learn as an entrepreneur that, uh, you, you can't teach this stuff in school, right? Like you're going to only build this if you, if you get out there and actually try a couple things and learn and learn how to take failures and make them learning experiences, learn how to not let setbacks hold you down. That's, I think that's the biggest part that I've learned through entrepreneurship is to just let the setbacks, you know, hurt for a minute, but then think, how can this make us better? Because we just learned something and like, it happens every day. It happens every week, but making sure that you actually take each of those setbacks, you can lick your wounds for a minute. You can say like, oh God, this sucks. This is not going to be great. But the important thing is to get back up, take what you've learned, make it part of a process, make it part of an improvement. And I uh, keep going. And like with that first one, we, I learned just don't get over your, out over your skis financially. And I think a lot of companies do that. It hurts them. They raise a lot of money early and, or take on debt and it, it comes back to bite them if they don't have a clear path. And, um, yeah, every, every little thing I've done along the way is a million life lessons, school, hard knocks, a lot of scar tissue. And I, uh, yeah. I, I could go on and on about the different companies and I've been a part of a different startups, different lessons, but this is, is a longer, longer episode. Yeah. I understand. Thank you so much for sharing. And, uh, what's your favorite SaaS product that you use apart from, uh, from your yeah. role? Um, I actually really love Figma. I think it's an amazing product. And I think like if I aspirationally for us from a product experience about the quality and ease of use from a content creation, from like onboarding to you're creating amazing assets. That's very aspirational for us to basically be able to do that with video content, not just like sourcing it, but the editing ease of use. And I think that's, what's going to help a lot of our professional services, organizations and content creators. Yeah. Absolutely. Figma is amazing. And yeah. I'm super grateful for you joining the podcast. Is there anything else that you want to share today? Uh, no, just check us out, braidit.com. I think we can help in a lot of different ways for a ton of different organizations, despite, you know, I told you our niche that we're focused on and uh, don't be afraid to reach out to me directly. Mike at braidit.com. Would love to hear from everyone and all of our users. Like, thank you. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for being customers. And we really appreciate everything you do. And we're 100% focused on creating an amazing product for you. And thank you for joining the podcast. You did great. I'm grateful. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> thank you so much. All right. Thanks.